In this tutorial, I'm going to demonstrate how to create and host a REST API using links. The service will involve an add user operation, which will add a submitted user's details to a database and return a response. Your solution is created with a blank process, and you can add as many processes and services as you want. The panel located in the center can be thought of as a canvas on which you build custom logic flows using the plugin functionality. On the right is the plugin panel. Lynx is based off a plugin architecture. Plugins are areas of higher level functionality and can be thought of as packages. Plugins contain related types, functions, and automation services. When a solution is created, the links and utilities plugins are added by default. These contain basic general functionality. If you require additional functionality, you can just add the relevant plugin. For this tutorial, I require functionality related to the REST web services. Encryption and database integration. The plugins and their contained functionality is now available to use in the solution. In the cryptography plugin, I will be making use of the encrypt function to encrypt the user's password. From the database plugin, I will be making use of the execute SQL function to add the user details to the database. And lastly, in the REST plugin, I will be making use of the simple REST host service to expose my process on a REST endpoint. I'm now going to create the user object that will be used in the request body and the input of the custom process. A blank custom type has been added to the solution. I can rename it and add the user fields. In the field editor, I can add the user fields and their types. Link stores these types in the JSON format and can be used for the request body and the response. There is now a user custom type which contains some fields. I have a default process which is currently blank. I'll rename it to add user to database. Next I'm going to set the user custom type I created earlier as the input and output of the add user to database process. The user custom type is available in the selection alongside the basic types. The output of the add user to database process is set in the same way. The add user to database process now has an output and an input of a user object. To begin our flow, I'm going to first encrypt the incoming user's password using a passphrase. To do this, I can just drag the encrypt function from the cryptography plugin onto the add user to database process. The input user object's password field is available in the selection. A passphrase is then configured for the encryption algorithm. The next step is to connect to my database instance and insert a user record. To do this, I can use the execute SQL function from the database plugin. This allows me to execute queries against the database. Using the built-in connection editor, I can establish a connection to my database instance. I'm then going to copy this connection string and add it to my solution settings or constants. This way, I can reuse the value by referencing the setting value in the functions I need it in. Now I'm going to add the SQL code, which will insert the user details into the database. Lynx has a database explorer, which exposes your database objects. Lynx also has a built-in query generator, which allows you to generate code templates. I'm going to make an insert statement into the users table. The input data user values, along with the encrypted password and other system values, are available for me to use in the query. I can just drag the values I want into the query. I can use the query generator again to return the new user details.
you can see the output of the execute SQL function will be the new user's details. I can now set the output user of the add user to database process by referencing the user return from the database. I can set individual fields or the whole object by referencing the available values from the dropdown. Using the expression editor, I can add some text manipulation. You are able to perform manipulations on objects by combining built in operations. Now that I have a custom process that takes in a user object, encrypts the new user's password, adds the encrypted password and the user details to a database, and returns the new user details from the process. I can now expose this process on a REST endpoint by creating a new simple REST host service with the appropriate operation. To add and initiate a simple REST host service to my solution, I can drag the simple REST host service from the REST plugin into my solution explorer. This will create the base skeleton for the REST service. I must now configure the simple REST host service properties. First, I need to configure the base URI. This is where the REST service will be hosted on. Next, I can create the operations needed in my REST service by expanding the operations property. This will open up the operations editor, which allows you to quickly define operations, methods, and parameters. In this case, I want to name my operation add user. The request will be made on the user's part. It will involve a post method. For the request body, I can reference the user custom type I created earlier. I can do the same for the response body. For the purpose of this demo, I won't apply any security. The add user operation is now being created. I now need to link the operation with the add user to database custom process. To expose my add user to database process in the REST operation, I can simply drag in the add user to database process onto the operation. This will mean that when the add user's operation is executed, it will execute the add user to database custom subprocess. First, I must configure the inputs for the process. I can just reference the request body value from the input data objects. Finally, I now need to set the response body of the operation equal to the output returned from the add user to database process. Links automatically creates the relevant data objects for you to work with. The operation response is set to the data returned from the custom subprocess. Now that the custom process add user to database has been linked to the add user operation, I can debug my operation to test that it is all working as expected. Links allows you to debug your operations in order to simulate the runtime functionality. In the debug values panel, I can input test data for the request body property. I can then add a breakpoint to the add user to database operation. This allows me to step through and pause on each function in the logic flow and see runtime values. The debugger is then initialized. In the first step, I can see my test request body values are passed in as an input of the add user operation. Next, I'm going to step into the add user to database process. As you can see, the request body is then assigned to the input user of the add user to database process. Next, you can see the encrypted string as the output of the encrypt function. Next, the user is inserted into the database and the new details are returned from the execute SQL function. As the flow returns to the main operation, you can see the user details are returned. Finally, you can see the operation's response body being set to the values returned from the add user to database process.
Now that I've tested the functionality of my REST service, I can deploy it to the Lynx application server where it will be hosted. This is done by simply clicking the deploy button. I can select my Lynx application cloud server and hit deploy. Once deployed, as it is the first time I'm uploading the solution with the simple Resto service, I need to navigate to the services dashboard on the Lynx server and start the service. In the database, I have a user table, which is currently empty. When a request is made to the Lynx web service, a new record will be added. Using a web request tool such as Postman, I'm going to make a post request to my Lynx REST web service. This will be on the user's endpoint. The request will contain a JSON body consisting of an object containing user fields. A request is then made to the Lynx web service. A successful response has been returned. A response body has been returned with user fields. A look at the database shows the new user added with the encrypted password. The auto-generated ID has been returned in the user response body, along with the text modifications performed on the user's last name field. You are then able to view the event logs on the Lynx application server dashboard. You can view detailed logs of events and errors, as well as upload version history, system-wide settings, and an overall view of your application.